fabric making for daily use of Lao women of all ethnic groups have been assumed since the ancient times. Oral literature which came into being thousands of years before written literature in addition to confirming the importance of weaving and silkworm raising amongst Lao Thai peoples. A Chinese historical document indicates that some 1,000 years before the Christian era, there are a kingdom called Tain or Tian, which was found along Yangtze River. The people of this kingdom knew how to raise silkworms whose fibers were then spun for fabric making. There is another document that talks about the homeland of Thai people at Nongse Lake around 700 AD. On full moon nights, the courting area in the village was a stage for women to demonstrate their spinning ability. Young men brought their works to the area also such as bamboo weaving or tying coconut husk or rattan rope twining and bamboo mouth organ playing. The Mon Khmer ethnic groups of the Lao people settled in this region at least 3,000 years ago. Those ethnic groups have a weaving technique called a body tension loom. This is considered the oldest technique. It requires simple tools and produces simple motifs. There are three Hmong ethnic groups in Laos. The white Hmong, blue or green Hmong, and the Black Hmong live throughout the northern part of Laos. There are still many Hmong women who keep their tradition and skills of spinning hemp or man in Hmong, weaving and dyeing using only natural materials. Lao women of all ethnic groups keep the tradition of cotton hemp and mulberry planting. They know how to raise silkworms and reel the silk. Lao silk textiles and Lao women's silk skirt or sin are very typical, interested and appreciated by foreigners of all times.
Encircle the eggs with wet fabric, then cover them with black fabric. Observe the eggs about 10 a.m. The newborn silkworms need it immediately to be swept out with a feather from the beast. Pour the pepsil to the newborn silkworms 20 minutes later. Feed them with chopped mulberry leaves. After this first feeding, sweep the silkworms out from the mulberry leaves to a wider space on the tray and feed them. Mulberry leaves are being chopped in squares with the width equal to the length of the silkworm and the length doubled to the width. Clean the excrements of silkworms one to two times a day, according to their ages. Do the cleaning before and after the silkworms sleep. Prevent silkworm diseases with pepsil, lime, burnt patties, and chlorine. When the silkworm is ready to make the cocoon, it is given a small nook of twigs, braided straw, or bamboo. They spin two semi-liquid proteins together at a rate of 30 cm per minute. This becomes a thread when it meets the air outside the silkworm's body. The silkworms turns 200,000 times in three days to spin a protective covering called a cocoon. It makes a strand of silk as long as 12 football fields. The cocoons are cooked in hot water to soften the resin, a sticky protein in silk, so that they can be unraveled. The silken strand from one cocoon is too fine to make into cloth so 6 to 20 cocoons are reeled or unraveled at the same time. The resin sticks the strands together to make a thread the size of a human hair. The medium silk is widely used amongst Lao weavers. For this reason, they sometimes produce silk using several layers of the cocoon and call this mixed silk or mai sao luan, silk pulled out of the whole cocoon. This silk is considered to be medium silk. Natural silk is white or yellow in color. Dyeing techniques using different natural sources provide numerous colors from very subtle light colors, from bright colors to rich, dark hues. Natural dyes can be divided into two different kinds, cold bath dye and hot bath dye. Temperature is very important for coloring. Some dyes are completely distorted when put in hot water. Raw silk contains a gummy resin which makes the thread appear hard and stiff. It is necessary to boil the silk in a solution of ash or lye to make it soft and shiny. The lye in combination with the boiling temperature removes the gummy resin from the silk thread. The solution of ash can be made from rice stalks, coconut husk, woods or amaranth. They are first burned to ash then added to water and filtered. The silk is soaked in lye for 30 minutes before discarding the lye and boiling the silk in clean water for another 30 minutes. 
After this, the silk is taken out of the pot and left to cool, then rinsed well, and finally hung to dry in shade. Spinning or lin, skeins of silks are wound onto spools made from bamboo. Setting up the warp, kun kuahu. The yarn from the spoon is transferred onto a wooden frame with knobs at both sides. The knobs hold the warp yarn in the required lengths. The number of warp threads wound onto the frame will normally be double that of the reeds of the chosen beater. Tying on the warp thread or soup move. The warp threads are removed from the frame, then joined one by one to warp ends from the beater and petals. Straightening the warp, gang kua hu. After tying the knots, the beater and heddles are hung from the top of the loom using bamboo ties. The warp threads are stretched from the cloth beams to the back of the loom, the separated neatly by means of two thin sticks placed across the warp. Selecting the beater, adjustable comb. The beater should be selected to suit the size of the warp threads and also to match the width of the finished cloth and the desired weaving quality. The size of the beater affects the design and texture of the final work. If the beater is fine, the texture will be thick and have finely detailed pattern. A wide beater will create a loose and soft fabric with a wide motif. Of the many different patterns created on the floor loom, all come from six main weaving techniques, as follows. The pattern is first created by counting and dividing the warp yarn up and down according to the order of the spaces in the reeds of the beater. Then the pattern is stored in the long heddle. Thus, a weaver can repeat the pattern from time to time. A weaver normally uses her fingers or a flat pointed stick made from animal bone or bamboo as a tool to lift and pass the warp yarn through in making the patterns. There are three main basic patterns using supplementary technique. One line design framework, dog dio dio. In this basic pattern, each line of design is exactly follows the previous line. Two line design framework, or dog song dio. In this basic pattern, there are two lines of design to follow. The two positions of these two lines are opposite each other. Freestyle design. The weaver is free to create her own designs. This form of weaving is the most common as it does not restrict the weaver and does limit the designs. In this process, sections of yarns are tied with strings at strategic points so that the dye cannot penetrate them, thereby creating patterns in the yarn. The steps for producing matmi are Measure the ikate frame to match the width of the loom beater Wind the threads around the ikate frame dividing them into sections called lam Identify the numbers of windings in each lam Wrap and tie the threads lam by lam to create patterns After finishing the tying, the yarn is taken from the frame dye and then hung to dry in the sun. Untie the yarn, spin it into bobbins and weave. The ikat yarn should be kept tense while it is woven. This is to arrange the tying pattern so it meets at the right spots to create an ideal pattern. This is woven using two warps at the same time. One is the main warp used as the background. The other, smaller warp is incorporated to create patterns or supplementary web. The muk is named according to the number of supplementary web threads in one column of pattern. Weavers commonly weave from muk 3 to muk 12. The muk warp is prepared according to the muk number. For example, muk 5 has 9 spaces of beater's reeds to hold the supplementary warp thread in each column of pattern. 
Every space of reeds consists of six threads, two from the main warp and for the mook design. The steps in producing mook are Set up the main warp on the loom. Prepare mook warp threads as needed according to the mook number and the number of column of patterns. Put the mook warp together with the main one and classify it using shed sticks. Make heddles for the shed sticks. Set up the mook warp with the mook heddles. Weave and make patterns by lifting the mook warp. Weavers use different colors of webbed yarn passing through the warp to create the pattern. These threads cross over and are fastened to each other at the same selected warp thread. This technique uses a web yarn with two or more colors twisted together. Threads of different colors woven freely create unusual and magnificent pattern. This involves making a design on the loom using more than two small heddles. Three or four heddles are used for this type of weaving. To make the design, two warp threads are joined together to one string of the heddle. The pattern is prepared by the way the warp threads are put onto the heddle strings. Then the weaving is done methodically. Mrs. Gong Tong, Nantavong Duong Si, Sai Sanit, a specialist and researcher of weaving, said, เสพอลายเด่นในผ้าพืชเมืองลาวสามารถแบ่งออกเป็นสี่ประเภทหนึ่งกลุ่มสัตว์น้ำในตำนานมีฐานต่างๆเงือกนาคหลวงเอื้อ
Designs in a coffin cover cloth of Kamu Ethnic. Technique used supplementary discontinuous wept. Motifs mythical bird, elephant, and zigzag line of flowers. Designs in a Thai ethnic woman headscarf in Huapan province. Technique used supplementary discontinuous weft. Motifs large birds, small lion, elephant, or sai ho, lizards, and flowers. Designs in a Thai dang woman headscarf in Ed, Siang Kho district, and along Nam U riverbank. Technique used supplementary discontinuous web. Motifs, flock of birds in a sin of Lu ethnic in Hun district, Udomsai province. Technique used, tapestry weave. Motif, crab, hook and frogman, designs in Taimoi ethnic sin in Huapan province. Technique used, ikat web. Motifs, monkey hanging on tree branches and star flowers. Designed in the border part of Red Thai ethnic Sin in Huapan province. Technique used, supplementary discontinuous web, ecat web, and twisted threads. Motifs. Diamond of flowers and lotus vine in the skirt border part of Lao woman living on the Mekong Riverbank, Vientiane capital, Luang Prabang, Savannakhet, Champasak provinces. Technique used supplementary discontinuous weft. Motifs, diamond of flowers, designs in a Putai ethnic woman's border shawl in Kamuan province. Motifs, tree, flowers and square of mythical deers. Designs in an ikat skirt of Puan ethnic living along Nam Ngum Riverbank in Sing Kuang and Vien Chan provinces. Technique used ikat web. Lao Tech is that beautiful and use fine technique with long header room weaving. I think time consuming reason, hand weaving is disappearing in the world, especially USA, Europe. Even Japan. That so many people come to see Lao textile. They are not just to see, quite a lot of people want to study techniques. Of course, somebody want to know just introduction way to Lao weaving, and some want to study a lot more Lao techniques. For Lao weaver, how to appreciate of Lao traditional weaving, that's why weaving curriculum needed. On this occasion, we can show you only a few of the predominant motifs of Lao traditional textiles. All predominant motifs were recreated and continuously developed by new generation of Lao weavers. The miracle of silk art are cherished and maintained as our heritage and tradition of our nation while recreating new designs and techniques carried on by Lao women for many years to come. ไปทั่วแดนแอนผ้าแพ้ไหมเหล่าใดยืนยงยั
em tiên tiên ngài nhám sâu nhám bài ai huân hạ nàng nhám khinh đơn ngài nhám thi hái chay ai hắc nuôn nàng hắc này quầm ngang hắc này quầm kinh thầm quân bên thế chạc chay bao la nhám sâu nhám bài ai muốn hạ nàng nhám khinh đơn ngài nhám thi hái chay ai hắc nuôn nàng hắc này quầm ngang hắc này quầm kinh khắp quần bên thêm chạc chay 